Welcome back to part 2 of the series, where this time we'll look into how to output a stereoscopic movie. Capturing a stereoscopic movie is a great way to show users the scene in virtual reality. Most online video platforms support stereoscopic movies, and this is what we are going to achieve in this tutorial. Ok, back in our scene in Unreal, let's open up our Blueprint Actor. So let's press G on our keyboard, which is going to show all actors in the scene. So let's press on the BP Capture one that we placed earlier on. And let's go into Edit Blueprints and open Blueprints Editor. Alright, so first setting that we want to change here is our Capture Width. We previously set a value of 1024, which was made for preview intent. But if we are outputting a movie, we probably want to bump that value to have a sharper resolution. So let's enter a value of 496 here for a value of 4K. Moving on to the vendor passes, we can select which passes to output. We have a setting of 1 set for the output final color. If we want to enable other passes, we can go ahead and type in a value of 1. So in this instance, if I want to enable the ambient occlusion, I'm going to type a value of 1 here. And same goes for the roughness. These passes will be rendered out separately and used for compositing if needed. For the output bit depth, keep that to a value of 8 for a PNG format and 32 if you want to output in EXR. We are going to keep ours at 8. Now on this last command, let's change our value to 0 here to say that we do not want monoscopic output. This will automatically switch to the stereoscopic view. Let's make sure to connect that node to the Movie 360 node and let's change the value of 50 to 150 here, which represents the number of frames to render. Once that's done, hit compile and save. Now that we've set up our blueprint for a stereoscopic render, let's create a camera path animation. So to do so, let's go into our search classes on the left and type cine, and let's drag a cine camera actor onto the scene. So I'm going to place my camera and uh, see what angle we can get. So I'm going to place it really easy here and let's move it along. And I'm just going to do a very basic animation here. So let's change our focal length a little so we get a bit more view. And let's place it for here for now. Now that is placed we can go ahead and create a sequencer level. So if you go up top here into the cinematics tab and click on the cinematics and we are going to add a level sequence. So click on that and I'm going to create a folder here called sequencer underscore panel. Okay and we can open that folder and let's name our sequencer sequencer panel. So what that does is create a timeline. And what we can do is add our camera actor into the timeline. So it's a very straightforward process. All you need to do is select your camera in the viewport then hover over your sequencer timeline, right click, add actor to sequencer, add cine camera actor 7. In my case, it's actor 7 as I have multiple cameras set in my scene. Now that it's set, we can see that our camera timeline displays with a number of set frames, which is 150 by default. So what we'll create here is a simple forward path animation. And we are going to keyframe this by going into the transform setting and click on the plus sign here to initiate our start state. So now my camera is keyframed at frame zero at this position. Now let's jump to frame 150 
and move our camera on the x-axis around, let's say here, and let's go and add a plus sign to define its new position. Now I can scroll through my timeline backwards and forward and see my camera animation. Okay, so that is working perfectly. Now we are ready to render out our stereoscopic render. Let's jump back to our sequencer and let's go into the render tab here and render our animation. So in this case, we can lower our overall resolution to something like 640 by 360, since we are not interested in the single frame output. It will save some performance for the stereoscopic output. As soon as we hit render, it is going to start outputting the stereoscopic render because we hooked all of the nodes in the blueprints. So let's go ahead and start capturing and see you in a bit. All right, the capture being finished, let's open up the directory folder in which we saved our frames. So by default, it's located on your C drive under the name panoramic capture frames. Let's open the folder and what we can see is three output folders, AO, final color and roughness that we enabled in the blueprints earlier on. Let's open the final color folder and open the first frame and let's scrub through the images to check our sequence. We can see that we have our camera path animation rendered correctly containing two images in a top bottom format, which would translate to the left and right eye, each view having a slightly different perspective, giving the viewer a sense of depth of field and separating objects from foreground to background on a VR headset. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one. Thank you.